Luke Norris is Vice President of Strategic Programs at Granicus. Luke, welcome. It's great to see you. How are you seeing organizations in government using data and artificial intelligence to drive innovation and drive efficiency? Yeah, uh, seeing it a lot more than I think we were even six months and 12 months ago, which is great. Um, I think what is exciting about that is we're seeing people move beyond the concept of it just being a proof of concept to really thinking about it as a scaled technology. Um, obviously, I think, you know, there's a lot of focus on uh, service delivery, uh, data analytics, uh, using the technology to ultimately provide better services to folks uh, in more personalized ways. So that's one of the things that I'm certainly seeing that's really exciting. Um, of course, re like eliminating redundancy in workflows, automating streamlining workflows is, of course, one that's, you know, increasingly. Um, and then the data analytics. So, you know, there's so much data and that data really is key. Uh, to the way that we can build experiences that help modernize how we deliver services to the people that government serves uh, and using AI to really um, analyze, streamline and better understand that data and turn it into you know, great intelligence is a key way that I think governments are also using AI today. How much of that acceleration that you've seen over the last six months or year is driven by the mission of the agency? How much of it's driven by advances in technology? Maybe some combination of those, maybe some other factor? Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely a combination of both of those. Um, I think as folks have gotten away from the idea of proofs of concept, they've gotten to the understanding that it is a scaled technology that can have a difference. I think what's most important though is the actual focus on it from the business line or the agency objectives and actually how it can better serve their goals of serving beneficiaries, serving residents, whatever the case might be, instead of just doing it for the sake of technology has been a big shift. I think, you know, for the first several years that AI was kind of an emerging thing, there was a lot of focus on it for the sake of just technology. Mm -hmm. And now I think as agency leaders are getting more and more involved in it, you're really seeing it being built from the lens of how does it actually help the people I serve or help my staff be more efficient and more productive. I know you've used the word scaled in past tense a couple of times. What are you seeing as far as successes in moving something, a pilot program or a test from scalable to scaled past tense that it, the agency's already achieved that goal? Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing in terms of scaled is that folks are really moving beyond just the concept of us, you know, an initial proof of concept to actually now saying, how do we scale it? And using more scaled technologies is probably what I should have said earlier, that I think it's, you know, how do we use technologies that are much more interoperable, modern, easier to configure, instead of relying on a lot of the custom built technologies that we may have had, that quite frankly, some agencies are even having to unbundle or unbuild to now use more, you know, managed services technology. So I think the big thing is, you know, as the technology is just changing so rapidly, folks now are really thinking about how do they have much more play, plug and play configurable capabilities, um, because days and weeks, you know, make a difference now, not years and months like we're used to with a lot of other technologies. Data is the most obvious answer to the next question, so that one doesn't count. What are the other technologies, what are the other items, I guess, that organizations want to plug into their artificial intelligence and automation tools? Yeah, I think data absolutely gets talked about. That one doesn't count. Yeah, but I think it's generally from the lens of the system data, not the actual user's uh -huh. data. Yeah. So I think uh, with the goal of driving more personalized, it's actually the preferences of the people. Mm -hmm. And so some of that I think is either the metadata from the billions of interactions that companies like us you know, provide to residents every day that can inform more personalized experiences. Uh, people's actual preferences for the language that they want um, certainly is a great example. Um, again, how do you use that individual personalized information to me? Um, the next piece I think is then, you know, just the ability to have multi-channel experiences. So, you know, I think a lot of times there's this idea that it only has to live on a website versus WhatsApp versus text messaging. Um, so, you know, how do you also leverage the understanding of the way that people actually want to interact with government and not have to bring them to a web portal, but actually do it in the palm of their hand when they're on the bus, sitting at a kid's soccer game or whatever the case might be. Luke, it's great to have you here. Thanks, Thanks for joining for me. Us. Great to be with you.